All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Lindsay here with Silhouette America uh, inside Silhouette Studios. We are so excited to join with Michaels and their uh, classes because things are kind of crazy right now. We're doing our best to try and get information in front of you and gather and still kind of have that community feel. Today we are going to make paper wisteria, if you can see it right here. This is one of our more popular projects we've made and it's absolutely darling. So if we want to start, because we're going to kind of take it from the very basics, even though I see professionals in this class, I'm sure they'll be able to comment and tell me you're doing it all wrong. And that's great because we love to learn. We love to learn how other people use our machines and tips and tricks. But for now, I'm going to go to share my screen and we're going to open up Silhouette Studio. And this, something similar to this will pop up when you have it. I have my page set up, which is this tool right here, open. And I have it under the portrait because we are using our portrait three today that we are so excited about. It will be available the end of September and it is a great machine. It is our most portable and powerful. It can cut uh, any material up to 12 inches and is perfect for cardstock and just regular uh, size paper. So we will open our design. I have mine already open, but you can go to your library and open up one of your designs here. I had saved mine just for ease of live because you never know what's going to happen when you go live. So I'm going to open our recent one and it's this wisteria. Uh, sorry, real quick. Do you guys have the ID number? We've got a crew over here to help answer questions. They are fabulous. And do we know the ID number on it? Okay, we will get the ID number, but this is our wisteria and it will open something like this. I'm going to show you right now how to adjust your cut screen because I like it when it goes horizontal. So I'm over here on the page setup. Again, this toolbar is over here and I'm going to hit this vertical because that just is more aesthetically pleasing to me, but that is dealer's choice at that point. And then what you can do is come up here to this tool at the top and hit fit to window and that's going to bring your cut screen into view. And then over here is our zoom out or we also have a fun, I'm going to zoom out just to show you this fun feature that is called the drag over zoom shape. So if you just have one shape you want to zoom in on, you click and drag over it and it's going to bring that into focus. But we will go back to our fit window and then I'm going to zoom out a lot because our design is much bigger than our screen. So this is the wisteria as it comes just straight from the design store. And as you can see, it's kind of big, won't fit on a page all at once. And we don't want it to because we're going to have a ton of cuts that we do with this. So we will bring it over here. And when you have, see how it's all moving together like this at once? What we want to do is ungroup it. So we'll select by clicking on anywhere on the actual design and see how it has a big square around it. That means this is one object. And you can either double click with the drop down menu and hit ungroup, or we can do object ungroup and see how it now has individual squares around each different, uh, I guess we call them petal or leaf. And now we can select each of these individually. But I do want to, sorry, I skipped a step on myself. For our design, what we really liked is they are a little bit smaller than this. And this is what's so fun about Silhouette Studio is you can really make it your own. So we are going to make this entire design smaller. So I'm going to select it all, grab this bottom corner, and we can make it tiny or we can even if we want to make it enormous. But for now, we're just going to shrink it down a little bit because it's a little bit more true, we think aesthetically to the wisteria that we want. 
Okay, so I'm gonna move that all off the cut screen because whatever is on this, for the most part, we're not gonna go into cut lines and whatever will cut. But so we will take these ones because they are, can fit on here. And now I'm gonna resize these ones as individuals because that's the best part about making flowers and things like that is they aren't perfect. They're different sizes. I can make this one tinier because I want to. I can make this one a little bit bigger because nothing in nature is uniform. So that is kind of my favorite part about Silhouette Studio is that you can take anyone's design and make it how you want it. Like I can make this one just smaller because if you can see over here, the imperfection is what makes it more realistic. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back up here to our zoom in screen. And everything again that is on this is going to cut. And now I'm gonna show you how to add in, oops, we don't want them to overlap, but we do kind of want to make some more room so we can cut a bunch at once. I like to use as much of the paper as I can. It kind of becomes like a little Tetris challenge for me to just squeeze in every little design that I can. So what I like to do from here is I like to take, I want these three again. So I can select just those three in the same way we go object up here. Oh no, oops, I went to the wrong one. We will go to duplicate. Sorry, sometimes you get into your own process and you just kind of use the studio as you've kind of adapted to it. So if someone has a different way of doing it, it's not wrong, it's just different and it's perfect. Sometimes we have our users find a different way to use our uh, stuff and it's like that is genius and now I do it like that from now on. Okay. So now we have our entire page set up. The next step you want to do is we are going to send to machine. Unless anyone has any questions about what I just did, we can slow down. Sometimes I get really excited about working with this stuff. Oh, the, design, yeah. the design ID is 274575. And if you Google Listeria, in search in the store in the store then it'll come up pretty fast if you search in the store then uh yeah just type in wisteria but the there's i think four options for wisteria but it's again one more time 274575 is the design id and we included the link in the comments if you've if you've seen it and, and then also um flavier design is the one who made it if sorry who Flavier. Flavier <laughs> Design is the one who did it. We have Sarah over there on the ones and twos coming down with the, the good information. Isn't life fun, you guys? It's just, that is our wizard behind the, behind the curtain. All these people answering the questions for you. Okay, but if we are good to go there, I'm going to take you to our send. This is where we will send it to the machine to cut. And there are just a few things that you need to check over to make sure that you're gonna, your cut's gonna turn out perfect. So if you can see on here how this, one, this pedal right here is just a little grayed out, that means it will not cut this little edge. So we are gonna wanna send it over just a little bit. See now all of our edges are going to cut. And what would also happen is if we overlap these, we would get our petals cut out here. So you want to make sure they're not overlapped and make sure they're all within the cut window. Okay. Now we're going to go over to material. And this is just plain cardstock. Uh, I think it's paper lane paper. It cuts beautifully on our machine. And I think that is all we need to see on our silhouette before we go back to live, unless anyone has questions. Anything we need to specify? Um, cardstock? 
Like what, what did you use? What kind of paper? This is cardstock from Paper Lane. From Michaels. Paper Lane from Michaels. And uh, next, and you'll also need a cut mat. We are using our portrait cut mat. And then, oh, now that we are out of screen sharing, now I am going to use, this is our auto blade for our portrait three. This one also works in our cameo four. We load it into our machine here after, so it may come with this little clip in and we're gonna pull it out and the hole will kind of be dark right there. So you can see that it's out and you just click the blade in, push it in until you hear that click. And then you know you are ready to go. Next, I have our portrait three mat. So this one is thinner than our cameo four mat, which is a 12 by 12. This one is, uh, I, the measurements say eight by 12, but it has registration marks on it and you're not really able to see it right here but this is where you can line up your paper out here uh, for your standard paper, which you can get at Michael's. See what I did there. So we're just gonna line it up in the corners and gently kind of press it down just so there's no bubbles or anything like that. Probably easier to see, lines up with these outer registration marks. And the top and bottom, there are arrows. And that's how you can load it into your machine either way. Sometimes I like to use the bottom half of the mat because I will cut the same, or I will cut a bunch of shapes over here and the mat will get worn and I just wanna use the entire mat. So flip it in, use it this way. Either way, you're good to go. Okay, I am going to load the mat now into the machine. And there are little marks here that show you right where to load the mat. And you press it up against the, this is our roller bar and the feeder. And we just simply hit this arrow, brings it in. Oh, and our machine is not connected right now. Oh, the Bluetooth, here we go. Oh, that's a good thing. So we are using Bluetooth. We are not using a cord to connect at all, which is such a great feature of, the, of our machines. Uh, Bluetooth, there's less wires, there's less clutter, and it is just awesome. So if you're bringing this to like a crafting party or you're traveling or you need to go somewhere and do something like on a job site or whatever, it is great to have this Bluetooth connection. And then I will hit send in our machine. And when I hit cardstock, that automatically gives the cardstock settings for the force and the speed and the blade depth. You should just be good to go. Some people like to adjust theirs based on their different paper and whatnot. What is nice is if you could see in our wisteria, we have some textured cardstock, some plain cardstock just to give it some depth and variance. So you can uh, go to like texture cardstock or heavy, whatever it needs to be. Can but, share share. oh, share the screen again? Okay. I can absolutely do that, you guys. This is fun. Thanks for being patient, learning with me. Okay, so if you can see right here, it automatically has the force at 20, speed at four, blade depth of three. And we have it on the auto blade, which is detected. We also have the ratchet blade, which uh, works in the machine. You just set that one yourself. For now, we're gonna do the auto blade because for me, it is a dream. I love the auto blade. It just does all the work where I have cut so many projects where I didn't change it to the right depth and I only had myself to blame and I only hurt myself, but here we are. Okay, gonna hit send, and then we can stop the share. Oops. And there it goes. So right now, it is doing the depth on its own. And it is just gonna start 
How many love this little machine? It's lightweight, portable, but so powerful. It can do, how, what's our maximum length that we can cut? 60. 60 feet. I don't know what you're cutting at 60 feet. Good for you, but it can do it. And I think we should all just cut something 60 feet because it can. And it works awesome with our nine inch vinyl and with a connected roll feeder, it's seriously the best. So it's just going through and cutting each pedal and I'll kind of wait so I'm not talking over the machine a ton. Are there other questions we wanna? Um, so the cardstock is actually Recollection, is that the name? There's Recollections and then also, so that one's from Michaels and then also from uh, just like the, if you go into Michaels and you look at like the random selection, mm -hmm. I just picked some colors that I really wanted. Oh yeah. So the Recollections paper at Michaels is my go-to. I could spend hours in that uh, aisle. So like we said, there, we have some textured, we have some just lighter, thinner. And what we're gonna do here is you can choose how many petals you wanna cut out. So you can cut out a ton and make these really long ones. You can do a short one. And then we can have these textured guys. Also, we have leaves in different greens, which is really fun. So what you will need next is some floss, embroidery floss and a needle. I like to go with this long guy. I'm not sure why. I think it's just easier to grip, but you, any embroidery needle will be great. And that one is for dolls. Like it's kind of like by where you would buy stuff to like make dolls and sewing. If you make <laughs> dolls and you know where the doll aisle is, apparently. <laughs> that we're, to look online, Michaels. <laughs> yeah, well again, any embroidery needle will do and is great. I also have with me uh, the hook tool I may just use this to roll and get the curve on the pedals and the scraper tool in case I need to kind of peel up carefully one of our pedals and then a ruler just to help me make these straight folds in the leaves. So if you've got all of that, oh, and a branch. You have this darn branch, you can use any sort of like thing to hang it on. Uh, that is dealer's choice at that point. So we are almost cutting. Looks like it's cutting great. And they wanna know how many papers. Oh yeah. Um, that just, <laughs> yeah, that just depends on how long you wanna make it. So I would say minimum four uh, pieces of colored one if you wanna make like a, a shorter guy. And then, uh, I mean, really, it you- It depends on your thickness. Like if you want the petals to be close together or yeah, it kind of, it really just depends on how you want it to look, but I would say start with four and then just keep cutting more if you want to add them in. Is The best part about this is that it's not going to, not everyone's will look the same because it's preference, but it's also how wisteria looks. Like they're not uniform. They're not, oh, 97 petals each. They're, some may have 50, some may have 90. I just made up those numbers. If you're cutting 90, you're going to have a great wisteria. And I would say Google pictures of like, live, like real wisteria too. Oh, that's a great idea to look at actual wisteria and see how it looks to you, how you like it. I like the imperfections in these where sometimes we have a little gap in here because that is true to wisteria. The look for it. All right, we are almost done cutting. It's looking great. It is done. So now I'm just gonna hit this down arrow, eject it, and we are good. So now what we're gonna do, this is a, a trick to unloading uh, paper from a sticky cut mat. I will take the exterior that I don't really care if it's flat or if it's curved. And I will remove that first because if it curls, it curls, not a big deal. What I don't want to curl unnaturally and can with paper are the petals. Because sometimes when you pull it up, it 
does its own little thing and I don't like that. I want it to do my thing. So I'm just gonna kinda, this doesn't have to be delicate. What you do wanna just make sure is sometimes when you pull, if it does come at different uh, angles, you don't wanna just rip it off because you can not actually rip off your design, which again, I have done and we have all made mistakes. And I think the best way you go about learning this is just to know, okay, this is my throwaway project. I say that to my mom all the time. She's so scared of starting and restarting because she'll take time in between projects. And I just say, mom, just know you are going to mess up. You're going to forget to mirror image something. You're going to forget to change the blade setting. And you just have to know that because all of a sudden when it clicks, it clicks and you've got it. But heaven knows when I first got started before I was working here, I was cutting into my mat. I was forgetting to change some, something, no one again to blame but myself. But we have some great classes on Silhouette 101 and on our YouTube channel. See how this just cut out? So nice, set that out to the side. And now I will get these little pieces that kind of tore out here and just remove them so we can kind of just see how they lay on the mat. One of my favorite projects, I guess my favorite go-to projects are flowers. I think they just look so nice. Do you guys have favorite projects? Feels a little bit like Mr. Rogers talking to his people while he feeds his goldfish. Mm -hmm. Oh, we would love to know what your guys' favorite projects are. Do you ever use, what, what's your tips for using cardstock on our mats? They're pretty sticky. They are very sticky. And what I first kind of learned is I will save my sticky mats for really, really heavy cardstock. And like if I have, if I'm using scrap vinyl where I'm just I always keep my scrap vinyl. I keep it in a little bin and it is kind of curly and I want that to lay just straight and flat. So I use that for my stickiest, but I'll take my used mats that have kind of lost their intensity, if you will. And I'll use those for cardstock because sometimes the cardstock can adhere to it too much. Another tip is to uh, take a clean lint free cloth. And when you first, if you want to just get straight to a delicate piece of paper and kind of dab at the mat with the lint-free cloth, and that just removes just like the super intense sticky. But usually I will, again, save the mat for those projects. And when that one kind of gets dulled, that's when I start using it as my uh, cardstock mat. Now what I'm going to do, because I don't want these to curl, I turn the mat upside down. And now I peel the mat away from the cardstock instead of the cardstock away from the mat. And that prevents it from curling. And I may just show you. Here's one, so see how flat and nice that turned out. And then I'll show you one. I will peel it up from here and just show you how it can kind of curl and watch it not curl because that's how this goes. It'll come out perfect. But sometimes when you peel it off here, Pull it off here and you roll it. See how it just kind of creates your roll, which is fine for this because we will be rolling them. But if you do have something you want to come off flat, it is always best, I think, to flip the mat over again and do let the mat. That's why our mats are so nice is because you can't, they are uh, light enough that they can be the ones that roll back. Oh, it just, you guys, this machine, crazy about it. So now I'm going to remove all the petals. Carefully. This is sometimes where I get impatient and I start ripping stuff and I just get so excited for my craft. I can't, can't wait. Are there any other questions about peeling from a mat? 
No, everyone's uh, above me in advanced and this is old news. <laughs> Sarah thinks I'm funny, so there's at least that that we have going for us. This is so fun, the silhouette or these Zoom classes that Michaels is putting on. Ask for any other tips, if they have any other good tips for paper. Oh yeah, does anyone have tips that they like to use? Because again, sometimes people just, I love how people can think outside the box and then it becomes my go-to on how to use this machine. I'm sure Ellie May and Terry are thinking about a hundred different things. They are our power users and I'm so happy to have them here. Okay, so that is our, these are all of our pedals in different sizes, different shapes. So now I'm gonna take our spatula tool and I'm going to start at the end of each pedal and I'm just gonna curl it around. And this is what gives it kind of the cone dimension. And this is a time intensive project, but it's also kind of mindless, which is the best. So you can pop on your Gilmore Girls, the office, and just start curling your little wisteria away. And what I kind of like to do is after I've curled each petal, I put it in the palm of my hand and just press it with my thumb and that gives it a little bit more of a cup. You can't see this, but I'm gonna describe it to you. In the middle is a tiny hole and that's where we're gonna thread the embroidery floss. So you don't have to create your own hole, you don't have to do anything about that. And again, we'll just start curling. You can even kind of mix it up and curl it a little bit this way. We are gonna curl. Don't worry, I'm not gonna curl every single petal in front of you, or will I? Time will tell. Press it in here, cup it. Ugh, it's adorable. Okay, what we did to save time and to keep people interested because watching me talk for that long is boring me. Just kidding, I could hear myself talk all day. We have pre curled a bunch and now we're switching to purple just to kind of differentiate it's exactly the same thing exactly the same process but here are a bunch of our curled wisteria leaves so those are all cut and curled to go you will do the same process to cut out the leaves of the wisteria same thing put it on your cut mat put it under cardstock settings, send it to your machine, and see how they come out all flat, which is great and beautiful, but is unrealistic to how a leaf actually looks in nature. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna go from top to bottom and just press it in a straight line like that. And that just gives it awesome dimension. What we did on ours, this comes in a strand, but what we did to kind of just, again, make it our own, you guys do whatever you like the best, but sometimes we would cut individual ones and just put them on there. So like here we have one green one, then we have some lighter green ones whatever you like. I just love the depth and dimension because if you were to look at wisteria, you're not just gonna have one stock green in there. There's so many different greens in nature. I love it. Okay, so now you have the depth and dimension. I think what would be good for next time is if we had a close-up camera so you can just kind of see the curl. So we'll leave those there. Now we are going to take our embroidery thread and you can use any color you can see here. We did white. This time we're gonna try a pink that I think will be so cute. You could do brown to maybe have a look like a stem. You could dye it, whatever you want to do. But cut it longer because what we are gonna do is tie a ton of knots. And again, if you go and Google wisteria, to kind of see the shape of it, 
you'll see a lot of the times it will start with a smaller section and get bigger or start big and then and go small and big again. So we're just going to kind of mix up our sizes. We're not just going to go small to bigs. This one's a great example where it's small, goes bigger, and then we go back to small again. And I think that's what gives this wisteria so much charm is that it does look natural. So I'm going to take the embroidery floss and I'm going to tie a knot on the end of it. And it doesn't have to be terribly big because our hole is uh, small but big enough that it's not just gonna pull out the other end. And mine is kind of looking a little shabby, but I didn't bring my scissors. Sorry, could someone have me scissors? You guys, live TV, here we are, we're doing it. Just throw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just gonna clip the end of it so it's not all dangly trying to do a cute little knot but here we are the paper, hides it. the paper will hide it but next time you guys I promise I'll do a cute knot for you and I'm gonna cut it long just in case because you can always always uh, cut off harder to add more and then now that I took that darling little needle and put it on a wood surface this is fun. Oh, I didn't. I put it in the bowl. Here we go, you guys. Sarah's our laugh track over here. There's a big laugh sign that comes on behind and she laughs on cue. <laughs> okay. Oops. Thread it on the needle. And then start bottom and we'll finish at the top. So these were kind of my bottom folded pieces. And this is kind of the lengthy process. Again, mindless, fun, but the result in the end is just so spectacular. We have had this one hanging on, oops, an exterior door. You can hang it on a bedroom wall. You could do a ton, ooh, do a ton and do a mantelpiece. If you have 40 years to commit to this, just kidding, it should go quick. And then after you have it on here, then we'll take this and we'll just tie a knot down here. Oops. And get all. Yeah, you could do a backdrop Oop. for a wedding. Yeah. Oh, a backdrop for a <laughs> wedding would be beautiful. Seriously, someone, someone's going to take this idea and I'll be like, oh, I hadn't ever thought about that. But these are so fun. I just suggested to use beads in between. Oh, beads in between would be so pretty. And I, I like that idea too because it would make it a little weightier. So like if you did have it on your door as a wreath, you know, it would just kind of hang a little bit more solid and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But see how it just, instead of sitting right on top of each other, that knot just gives it that little bit of space, again, that gives it the depth and dimension that we are looking for. And then we will just keep going. You can do the knots further apart, closer together. Sometimes you can just stack them one on top of the other. Is anyone making this as we go or is everyone just kind of watching it to do? later. Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Erica says she's making as she goes, but still curling. <laughs> okay, yeah, and I will slow down. The curling is a fun process, and again, like, the imperfection is what is what I love so much about doing things that are natural. So some will curl better, some will be super curled. So fun. And then I'm going to do this one without a knot just to kind of have it, but I'm going to like off center the leaves a little bit and see how it just kind of makes it a little bit thicker in there as you have the gaps. Again, nature is imperfect, which makes it so fun to craft. Does anyone have questions about the software? We have our experts over here from our support team and from our social media. 
Anyone have any questions for them? They're responding. While I tie knots. Mags Bonham just said, I'm thinking about doing it in polymer clay. Oh, Mags Bonham does some incredible clay projects that are so fun to see. That is that is a user who I'm always just like, I never ever would have thought about using our machines that way. So thanks for chiming in, Mags. And um, where will this be available after the class is over? Oh, that's a great question. I'm not, I know we did discuss it. Will it be on YouTube? Mm -hmm. On Michael's YouTube. On um, Michael's YouTube. Will it be on our YouTube or just Michael's? Um, I'm not sure, but for sure Michael's. Okay, for sure Michael's go-to place. I just, I think this is such an awesome thing that Michael's is doing. And we'll share a post on social media again with just all the materials you need and where to go watch it on Michael's. Okay. So if you didn't have, if you're at your job and you're watching it. <laughs> Which no judgment. <laughs> then you can do it later. Been there. Don't tell my boss. Just kidding. This is my job. So when I'm watching people craft, it's what I do, you guys. Uh, also, if you want to see more projects, this project and other projects that our users use and what uh, users make and what we make, you can follow along at silhouette.inc on our Instagram. And then our Facebook page, what is, um, how would you find that, just silhouette ink or is it just silhouette? Sorry. I, it's those things I know, but now that I'm live, I'm starting to second so guess myself. Silhouette Global is the tag, but if you just search Silhouette, it should come up first. Okay, Silhouette Global is the tag, but if you just search Silhouette, and again, uh, today, if you are watching live today, I know this won't, uh, uh, for someone watching on YouTube, but we uh, are talking about our Silhouette portrait three today. It is our newest version of our portrait machine, which is our tiny but mighty little guy. There's no specific uh, materials you need to use it. It can cut just regular standard paper. It can cut vinyl, like we said, up to 60 feet. I was thinking uh, for projects to kind of showcase this, if you had like a border in a nursery room. You could just do like a train that goes all the way around the room it would be so cute. Uh, other things you could use long cuts for are bulletin boards in schools. We do know that a lot of teachers use our portrait. If you want to bring it into the classroom, it is our most basic. As you can see, it is just these buttons right here. So kids can use it. Kids love it. It's just a simple machine that really has very few limit, the one limitation I can think of is it's just not gonna cut your 12 by 12 uh, cardstock, but anything else can go through this uh, machine. Oops, got myself. And one cool thing about Michael's is they do curbside delivery now, so if, you <sighs> are, if you're not going out and you don't wanna go in stores, then you can order the machine and all the materials you need for the project. That on their website and they'll bring it up to you. Curbside delivery, if that stays a thing forever, I would not hate that. I am loving the curbside pickup. Maybe it's just me. Sorry, I'm getting all tangled up here. But again, it is just knots, knots and thread, knots and thread. Ooh. Big knot over here. Is anyone preparing any school projects? Back to school projects. I think the next thing I want to make is a cardstock pencil banner. I think would be so cute for the mantle. I am, if I am to do a project for myself, my first thought is a mantle. I am obsessed with decorating mantles. We have a friend who her favorite thing to make are wreaths. So Whenever we're talking about ideas, she's making a wreath and I'm making stuff for the mantle.
Anything about school? No? Okay. It's fine. We hate school. <laughs> oh, we have, I have had so much fun crafting while there is so much time. It just seems like the perfect thing to do is just go through, I mean, just go through all my scraps and see what that strikes joy in me. And I make something out of the scraps if I don't want to go buy some stuff. But again, that curbside delivery has, that is a temptation I do not pass up on. Let's see. Do we have any other comments coming through? I'm really liking how this about the Solo Go mobile app. Oh, yeah. That's being released today, right? Uh, the beta version. The beta version, yes, that's what it is. The beta version is being released today. And I have been one of the lucky few to kind of dabble in it. And I think it is going to be so fun to use on the go. It does uh, just make it so simple to load it up on your tablet or your phone and then Bluetooth send it to your machine. It is awesome. Yeah, and so which machines will it work with? Which solo machines? It will work with any of our Bluetooth machines. And so that is our Cameo, is it Cameo 3 and up? or? Cameo, yeah, Cameo 3, Cameo 4 plus, and then Portrait 3. The Portrait 3. Yes, so excited about that. It has been so fun to watch this kind of Go app come into fruition and kind of, but remember it is beta, so there will be updates to it and I think it will just keep getting better and better. It is something that we are asked about all the time. And I think you guys are just gonna love it. We hold it up so we can see. I absolutely will. I was just kind of keeping it for myself. <laughs> so this is where it's coming along. So we have some shorter ones coming through. I'm gonna start now working on the the thicker ones to kind of get that mass right there. Yeah, we are, uh, I think, set and scheduled to do more of these uh, universal Zoom classes with Michaels. I think our next one is in September. September 9th at September 9th at 3 p.m. We have a couple of um, different people, people might recognize the affiliate people that will be teaching. Yeah, we're going to have some different faces on here of uh, our users who are so great with our machine and want to showcase their work. We want to showcase how they use our machine. And yeah, but again, all of these supplies can be purchased at Michael's. So you just load up your cart. You deserve it. Treat yourself. Tell them Lindsay sent you. They won't know what that means. Get an odd look. Be worth it. <laughs> Those are just, just for Sarah. Keep her entertained over there. Sometimes she gets sidetracked, and so who knows what she's looking at. Just kidding, Sarah. I feel like I'm constantly treating Erica, but I feel like I'm constantly treating myself with craft supplies. <laughs> Erica, I get you. Kindred spirit over there. And don't let don't let the man get you down. You keep treating yourself. Yeah, flip these over and do these. This way. Are there a lot of people typing questions? Um, someone wants to know if the app will be on both iOS and Android. Yes. And, and
and and the answer is yes yes it has i have only tested the ios version but i have heard that the android version is doing just great as well uh, how will you guys use your mobile app what are you most looking forward to with that portability Carrie johnson was saying that she took her portrait camping oh <laughs> terry terry's the best camping and what did she make while she was camping i just clicked on her link i gotta go look terry makes some incredible projects and knows our machines back forth and sideways but camping i just got back from camping i well, didn't decorations for her rv very appropriate. <sighs> Terry, I have a sprinter van that I could use some. I've been thinking about doing a large vinyl kind of landscape mural on the outside with vinyl, which I think would be so fun. So that's what I'm rolling around in my mind. Did she use her Bluetooth? Does she like using her Bluetooth or does she? Bring her cords while she's camping. On her blog post, I see a picture of a phone. So I think she was maybe using that. Terry does it all. I want to be Terry when I grow up. What is your favorite thing to use your 40% off Michael's coupon on? I don't know why, but that just every single time I use that, I'm excited about that discount. I think I use it most probably on paper. That is my go-to craft of choices cardstock. I love paperwork. <laughs> If someone has questions after this, where should I send them for support? The contact page, the contact page on silhouetteamerica.com. And we have a great group of support that I will ask questions to. And um, we'll be sharing um, a post just about the project, just sending people to where they can go and watch it on Michael's YouTube. And if they also have questions like specific to the project, they can, they can comment on that post as well. Okay, great. And then if you guys just want Sarah's home phone number and address, we'll do that. You can just show up and ask her questions. She's happy to do it. I just could get <clears throat> lost in doing this project forever. That like mindless repetition is so soothing. I love it. I can't wait to see a clay version of this. It would be so neat. It would almost be kind of fun to do it like in black for Halloween. A haunted one. Spooky. Spooky Halloween. And now we are coming on to our last large guy, but I'm saving a smaller one for the top because I do like how it kind of finishes the top. One more knot. Here. I, have I even looked up from this? I'm just in the zone here, you guys. I'm just loving this oh that knot kind of got away from me the best part is if you do tie a few knots you do have a little give in pushing the pedal past it to the other knot again it is so forgiving imperfection is perfection in nature i am stitching that on a pillow <laughs> trademark that that's mine we're just here for a good time. And here 
Oh no, as I tell you, you can do it and I make a giant knot. Here is our wisteria. Again, imperfection gives it the depth and the fun. And then we can just hang it with our other little guys, which again, I love that we, did, uh, we have different colors, different textures of paper. Put it up here. And the branch, you can use a dowel or Oh yeah, a, a dowel. We actually used a branch and then some ties to like hang it on a door. Whatever you guys wanna do. You guys, thank you so much for joining us here with Michaels at Silhouette Studio. If there are any other questions? Um, just I, with the leaves, did you already say how to attach them? I just use top glue. Oh yeah, so like you can, you can tie your uh, embroidery floss around your stick or dowel or branch or whatever you're using. And then just on top of that, like I said, you can do the whole, whoop, the whole thing of leaves or take like these three leaves, tear them off and put them on here and just hot glue them on there. And make it however you like. You can leave it without the leaves. You can do more leaves. You could even do some, I think it'd be pretty to have some leaves coming down here to add a little bit more depth and texture. It's been so fun to have you guys here. So fun to work with Michaels. Go to your nearest Michaels, do your curbside pickup, go in the store, whatever you can do to craft during these times, be sure to check out our Portrait 3. It is one of my favorite machines here. Okay. And maybe just remind them one more time, like where they can sign up for more classes, where they can see this class, and then where they can get the portrait. I'm gonna be honest, where can they sign up for more classes? The, um, Raina Birch shared a link. So it's michaels.com slash classes. michaels.com <laughs> slash classes and sign on up. They have some other classes that I have been a part of and, excuse me, watched, and it is so fun. And then uh, comment on our silhouette.inc on Instagram for other projects you would like us to feature, or if there is one of our affiliates that you would like to see one of their projects done, and we will see what we can do. Thank you guys so much.